Hi everybody, my name is Lee McCormack. I'm from Lee Likes Bikes. Today we're here to talk about cornering. Cornering when, when done well is exquisite and like skiing, snowboarding, these are all heavy duty cornering sports. There's a guy named Jimmy Chin. He's a very famous climbing climber and videographer and photographer. He says that weightedness, unweightedness and rotation are the nectar of flow. And I fully agree. So if you think about anything flowy, skiing, snowboarding, mountain biking, motocross, surfing, skateboarding, on, on, on. They all contain those components. And the cool thing about it is like when you know how to corner, every day is a powder day, man. Right? right? Yeah. In this video, we're going to show people what we consider to be the essential elements, the three big pieces. Um, and so let's get after it, man. You ready? Yeah. The number one rule of shredding a bike is put the net force your weight in your feet or foot and keep your hands completely weightless. For a basic corner, right now where we start, we're gonna load the outside foot. When the outside foot's down and you lean your bike, you're standing on the edge. This is the same geometry and dynamics as uh, skiing. This is, a, this, is a, this is not always the fastest way to corner, but with the foot down, it's always a safe way to corner. So we always start here. This is your default, oh no, I can't make it, boom, technique. Okay, so here we are. We have 100% of our weight on the outside foot. For a left turn, that's our right foot. No, nothing with the hands. Check this out. When your hands are not engaged with the bars, this is pretty cool. Watch what the bars do automatically when you lean. Huh, that's curious. Now I'm gonna try to roll my bike straight, but it doesn't go straight, does it? No, it makes a mathematically perfect circle. And also the, the wheel is naturally tracking the little rocks on the, on the dirt here. That right there is the essence of how a bike turns. And it only worked because this meatball here wasn't messing with the bars. Let's just say you go riding one day, and this particular day, you have a microgram of pinky anxiety. This is all it takes, watch. Pinky, just like, I'm not so sure about life anxiety. You're trying to turn, but your bike's going straight because you're too engaged. Your bike will not turn correctly until you release. Then the bike will obey. What you've been doing is you've been steering manually, right? And which means you're either steering too much and the front wheel's washing out or you're tucking over the bars, not cool, or you're not steering enough and you're just flying off the trail. So job one is leaning the bike independently from your body. Now that's the concept we're gonna step through, through like my three steps of progression with Nicole as the student. All cool things start in a hinge, a low hinge, and cornering is one of the coolest things, hence it starts in a low hinge. So we're in a bike stance, and let's, let's check out our low hinge. Now, if she's gonna turn left, she's gonna support all of her weight on her right foot. So pick up your left foot and just balance on your right. What do you feel in your body? My glutes engaging. A lot, huh? Yeah. So that's all of your body weight on one leg. Ideally, we'd be down here in a hinge, with our knee over the middle of the foot with the butt back, and you can hang out here indefinitely. Um, if you're not comfortable here, your body will tend to do this number. The tighter the corner is, the more we have to lean the bike. The more we need to lean the bike, the, the lower our shoulders have to go. So anything we do that unhinges us makes us una unable to corner. Mm. So we wanna really get good, first of all, at hinging on one leg. And from here, we're gonna focus on leaning the bike independently from our body and the act of leaning the bike is going to let the bars turn and the bike will make a nice carve and that's where we start for the first step what we'll do is we're going to set up a roughly 90 degree corner um, we're going to enter at kind of moderate speed slower is better than faster um, as i enter i'm going to get in my low hinge i'm going to put my right foot down ahead of time so step one just understanding that when i lean the bike the bike will turn on its own. Okay, I'm looking, I'm cooking, and I'm booking. There it is, nothing fancy. Create the angle and feel that the bike will corner. The net force is in the foot. If you stand on your foot, you're good. Hands stay weightless. Creating this angle and rotting this edge makes beautiful basic cornering. So that was step one. You come in with your low hinge, you get that right foot down with the load and the glute, lean the bike, and the bike works, doesn't it? Yeah. Now we're gonna add 
a hip turn. Mm -hmm. And so what we're gonna do is as we enter the corner, everything we do is an as a while during. While you lean the bike, we're also, you're also gonna rotate your hips to where you wanna go. Mm -hmm. And so, so we'll start in an easy way. So we'll start in a hinge with your left foot forward, okay? And this is fun, your belly button is right on top of the bottom bracket right here. Basically, it, st it stays there. So a lot of times you'll see on the tube of you, people will take their hips and they'll put their hips outside the bike and then try to turn the bike. It doesn't work so great, right? We want to keep your belly button compared to the normal force right over your bottom bracket. So check this out. Then we're going to rotate your butt out to smash the pedal and your consciousness forward to smash life, <laughs> right? And then what we want to do, ideally like a common mistake is people will move their side, like they'll close this space, they'll, like, they'll turn. For our purposes, this is a lever. So it doesn't, it doesn't bend, it doesn't arch, it doesn't twist. This is locked in. The movement happens in the hips. And maybe if you can get like a 45 degrees across the top of the frame, that's pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. So lock it in for now, it's new. Lock this in and then just move your hips. And only move your hips as far as they go, boom, and that's it, right? And over time it opens up. And you can handle this, Nicole, is we're gonna do it on one leg. Here's a hinge on two legs. Here's a hinge on one leg. You're down in here, and we're gonna turn on top of this femur, and we're gonna rotate in the new direction. And again, the more range of motion you have and the more stable you are, the better you can shred. Hell yeah! Oh my goodness, that's really good. That's a solid 45 degrees. That's rad. Foot's down, you already have the the hand thing going on, you're gonna also do the hip thing. The hip thing does three cool things for you. A, it adds torsional force. It also creates space for the seat to go under your thigh and it helps to redirect you in the future. Okay. All three good things. So now we're on the bike. There you go, there you go, there you go. Cool, cool. So the, so the power of your hips doesn't come from where they are, it comes from the going there. Mm -hmm. So as you come in this time, like be a little bit more discreet with it and be like, I'm gonna kind of going straight. And then you're gonna like, like a, create a wave and you're gonna go like, I'm turning, I'm resuming straightness. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. And like, and tie the power of your hip with the lean. Mm -hmm. Those are gonna become inextricably connected. Yeah. There it is, get in there. Heck yeah. That thing's working now, good. Lower shoulders, yeah. Dude, for real, that's proper, proper turning. It's really good. So now what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do is we're going to get dynamic with your foot or feet and actively generate traction while we corner. So just for fun, you wanna try an experiment with me? Yeah. So let's get, like, put your hand on the ground, just lightly. This is gravel over loose. So no, your hand's not very heavy mm -hmm. and it's very easy to move it around. Yeah. So what I'm gonna propose is that if you make your tires heavy enough, you can create temporary hard pack by, by smashing all these particles together. So how about you're strong, do like a one arm plank and like dig your hand into that surface. And now let's see if I can move your hand. Uh, no, you feel that? How strong and like how stable you are? So we're gonna take the same principle to the bike. And this is a switch we wanna make in our heads. When you see something sketchy, we don't wanna become more apologetic. We wanna become more emphatic. I'm looking, I'm cooking, I'm... Foot down all the way has the least amount of pumping power and the most amount of edge bite. Not the fastest way to corner, but always a good way. Feet level is the most pumping power. In a simple sense, you would use your feet level anytime there's a good berm. So when we're out riding here after this, we're gonna be feet level when there's a good berm, foot down when there's not such a good berm. By the way, feet at an angle when there's a semi good berm. We're gonna do the same technique with feet more level. Mm -hmm. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get away from edging energy and more into pumping energy. Mm -hmm. the, like pumping the corner, pumping a straightaway comes from this delta here. So again, off the bike, get good at this when you're on your conference calls or whatever. So that's not like crazy killer badassery or anything, but the fact is, I made a turn at decent speed on off camber gravel without braking, without drifting, and without dying. 
I, I was going to write this cool article. I opened up a spreadsheet, and I'm like, I'm going to watch the top 10 men. And I'm going to do a spreadsheet with every corner, whether they put their foot down or not. It was a non-article because at that level, every single pro man had his foot level, feet level, every turn, without exception, foot down. So the foot down might not be the sexiest and fastest way, but we got to have it. So that was sick. You're, just, you're not getting a ton of pressure, but you're getting some. Yeah. And so this is hard because A, it's sketchy. B, you're creating a, a virtual hole out of nothing. When we get on trail and there, there's any kind of cup and all trails have shape and cups, when you get on my wheel, we're just going to pump all of them like that. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be insane. Like just like 10 minutes of this before you get on the trail changes you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so good. Can't wait to shred.